Bullet Bourbon Blenders Select. So uh, it's uh, Bullet's Blender, bur- Bullet's Bourbon Blenders. Boy, How much have you been drinking? Bullet, um, uh, I have a little aphasia to begin with. Uh-huh. So it probably wasn't good to have me read. Okay. Bullet Bourbon's Blenders Select number one is made with pure Kentucky limestone filtered water. The Bullet brand's proprietary yeast strains coax extra flavor from the distiller's grain. It helps give Bullet Blenders its distinct taste. And it's made from locally sourced ingredients wherever possible, including Kentucky uh, Kentucky corn from mm. the farmers of Kentucky. It is 50% ABV, 100 proof, and it's formulated by mingling three of the ten distillates that are often part of the original Bullets bourbon blend and aged a minimum of nine years. Fascinating. So, so this is a minimum of nine uh, years? A minimum of nine years. It's aged in uh, identical barrels for Bullet bourbon and Bullet Bourbon Blender Select. And they're both fully matured in new American white oak, flamed to a number four char, and the barrel heads are flamed to a number two char. Interesting. And the, the uh, suggested price on this is $49.99 for okay. $7.50. Okay. So, so it's a nine year old bourbon. Nine year old bourbon. 100 proof or 50% ABV, and it's 50 bucks. 50 bucks. And 50 they bucks. don't go over the uh, mash bills to give you an idea what it is. Just that it's bourbon, so we know that it is 51%, 51% corn, corn in the corn, and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Or just going to be a, lot, a whole lot of corn. So, balance okay, let's go in. Let's take a look at this thing. Well, let's go. Salute, sir. Salute. Salute. Uh, I like the color. It's, it's a little darker. A little dark. A little like... Uh, it's more than amber. Yeah. It's taupe. Extra amber. It's taupe. So the, uh, not the, a topiary. The fine folks sent us a how best to enjoy your whiskey. So you pour 1.25 ounces into a glass. No, that's about 1.25 ounces. Eh, maybe, maybe okay, not. Okay, we're, yeah. we're, taste, uh-huh. we're, we're, we're doing notes, though. Uh, you do not add water or ice yet. Nope. You, you swirl the whiskey in the glass no. to coat the glass. Swirl, swirl. A little swirl, a little twirl. And it allows it to breathe. Breathe. Then you breathe <laughs> in through your nose about an inch away with your mouth open. Very important. Keep your mouth open. Much like our bourbon master friend said. So the experience is not too intense on your nostrils. And then they tell you to sip and to continue breathing while you sip. I'm not sure how you do that. So don't hold your breath and sip? I don't know. I probably have problems with that. Mm -hmm. Sip sip and swallow. All right, so let's let's take a nosing. It's got some vapors. It is very vapory. I'm getting some vapors. For 50%, this seems like more than 50%. Although you like like whiskey with a five. I do. I do. I do. It's got a lot of vapors. I mean, I'm getting like a lot of like ethanol or methanol or whatever the hell this stuff is. Someone but not else? meth. No meth. Someone else? No meth. No, no, this isn't a Breaking Bad. Hey, I am the danger. It smells good though. It's it's a little, there's a little, uh, like with that rye we tried a little while ago, a little herbaly note to it. A little herbaly note and a little bit of sweetness. I'm getting a little bit of the corn, a little yeah. sugars. I'm going in. It smells hot for some reason. I'm getting like a little bit, almost like a chili pepper off the nose. Like you were saying, what was what did you have in your lunch today? Was it Serrano chilies or we had a poblanos? Oh, poblano. They're not very hot. They're just no, good. They're, they're just nice, yeah. All right. So when you sip, mm-hmm. you continue breathing, and then you roll. Don't swish the whiskey in your mouth before swallowing. Chew your whiskey. So I, it's uh, not as hot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wrong pipe. I chew too much. Not as hot as the nose would suggest. No, but. Very Ooh. nice, and not as vapory. It's dry, though. It's got it's some very dry on the back note, and it's a longer finish, a little bit, little bit more of a burn, which I guess is the 50% ABV coming through. They suggest that you add water in small amounts to taste, and it opens up the flavors to give you a little extra. And then after a sip, take a bite of chocolate, cheese, a pretzel, or dried fruit. See if that changes the flavor profile. I got nothing. Which, well, I'm not expecting anything on. We've done this many times. But for the mm. novice... It's 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 not thick. It's not a very thick whiskey. Yeah. It's definitely very dry. Like my whole like right here, like behind my my front lip, my lower lip, is all kind of like anesthetized and dry, parched. My tongue, about the first third, is also kind of parched. But the flavors are nice though. And there's a little bit of sweetness up front, not too much. Uh-huh. So I don't know if there's as much corn in this as we maybe thought. 51% corn, it might not be much more corn. There's a lot of rye sharpness to it, and a lot of heat. So I, I, I find that there's a lot of sugars up front, a nice like peppery kind of note in the middle. 
and then very drying on the back end. That's pretty good. It's like when we had that little tasting a little while ago. You think maybe there's some wheat though? Because it almost has like that willet type yeah, of quality. Yeah, balance out some of this. There's some sweetness in it too. Maybe. Maybe that's uh, to balance out some of the rye. Maybe. Yeah, because yeah. it's not super. It's not particularly sweet. Yeah. But I do get like you know the usual, the brown sugar, the cinnamon, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And it's 51% corn, but it can be 49% of whatever they want whatever to do. Whatever else you so, got, right? So they could throw in rye, they could throw yeah. in some barley, some malt, some... Uh, or I could be completely wrong. Wheat. This could be 90% corn. I have no idea. It is true. You're completely wrong a lot. So mm -hmm. it could be that way. Whereas I am never wrong. I thought you told me that you're paid to be wrong every day. Never wrong. I'm never right, but I'm never wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, hey, it's guessed. So, hmm... I, I liked it. It was good. It's pretty good. It's um, pretty good. I'd say it's a B, B plus. It reminds me a little bit like the way it is, like that dryness, kind of like the Woodford Double Oak. Mm -hmm. You know, it has that kind yeah. of dryness to it. Yeah. It doesn't have that the richness or the, the the like the viscosity of the Double Oak, but that's pretty decent. I'd say it's B plus. I'd yeah, give, it, I'd give it like an eighty nine. Eighty yeah, eighty eight eighty nine. I think it's an eighty eighty nine. Sure. Yeah, it's probably worth. You know, I don't know. I mean, there's fifty fifty bucks is a tough price point. Because you can get a lot of really, you can get a lot of good stuff at that fifty percent, at that fifty dollars or forty-five to fifty dollar range. I mean, would you take this over the uh, the the Four Roses single barrel? Well, the, the that thing comes that, in at the same ABV. The thing that I think you got to you bear in mind too is that this is an American whiskey that's aged nine years. Right. Where a lot of American stuff is three years. Yeah. You know, where. All right, for nine years, would you pay the extra money, go over that twenty-five or thirty but dollars as threshold? We, as we've learned, there though. you go. Age is relative. It doesn't. It's not a guarantee of not a better whiskey. Yeah, not a you know, so like we just had that three-year-old rye a little while ago, yeah. and that was pretty damn good that's at three good. years old. That's pretty good. We had, so, that, we had that year old Israeli. Whiskey. Yeah, right. That's pretty good for a year. Different, different like environment, climate, but all that good stuff. Pretty good for a year. So you, can't you know, really, I'm not saying the age is the only indicator, but it like, is hard to get an American whiskey that's old. Let's let's take us for an example. We're kind of all we're over the hill at this point. Right, we're on the uh, we're on the the back end of our lives. Would you say we're any better, older? I would say that they just had a whiskey auction, uh -huh. and an old Japanese whiskey uh -huh. that was fifty two years old, okay, just set the record uh -huh. for Japanese whiskey, okay, and it was four hundred thousand dollars for the bottle. So you're saying we're like priceless? So I would say if they put us up to auction, we should probably be priced like old Japanese whiskey. That's just my point. I don't know if our spouses <laughs> would find the same thing. I'm guessing they would say, uh, if you gave me $500,000, I'd get this money this guy <laughs> yeah. in a heartbeat. They might pay someone $500,000 to get rid of us. Because you figured they could pay off the mortgage. They could probably still have another 300000 $300, or three fifty dollars left in their pocket. So, yeah, I'm thinking we're out. So let's not pose that scenario. Right. Anyway, so, so, so I'm, going with, I'm going with the high B+. Plus. Yeah, I'd say it's 80. I didn't, it was very good. good. I didn't love That's it. Good. I didn't love it. It was almost to be a little too dry. You found it a little too dry? Maybe. Now, the, the regular bullet bourbon and the bullet rye. Yeah. Big fans. I like enjoy the regular it. bullet. I like it. You know, they're, but they're, you like it, you don't love it. I don't so, go out of my so way for it. So this would fall in that same category. It's if well I made. Was on, if I was on the Petri dish that we call a cruise ship, um, and, you know, usually it's like a very limited menu in terms of like, you got, let's say you got the drinks package. Yep. Right? If bullet was on the menu, I'd go for that. Yeah. I like it. So, anyway, B+. Plus, Thank you to the fine folks at um, Bullet for sending us along. Absolutely. And uh, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.